Hi, welcome back to Science Talks and All Kinds of Crap. Today, we are going to talk about temporary storage. Temporary storage is needed in your computer to put it into permanent storage. In simple terms, it's basically the thing where, like, let's take a look at water. Water can be put in the water can for temporary storage until it's used. But the water can has a leak in it, so it slowly drips out if you don't use it. And that's the same as the temporary storage system we are going to make today. So, here I have a little, little thing. So, let's say we have a control circuit dash computer. Then we have the memory module, and then we have, for goodness sake, I hate this word. Then we have the permanent memory that it goes to. See, first it goes from computer to storage to permanent memory. And we are going to solder this circuit right Come on, I'll ink. Goodness sake. Just ink it up. Ow. Right. We're going to make that part of a computer today which was the wrong in this case it's going to be very very crappy ROM it can store this is how much information it can s store at once one one or one zero or zero one or zero zero all right so let's see. Um, we'll need this. We'll need that. And, uh, just, um, and uh, there we go. We have the circuit. You see, these two capacitors will store charge, and then these two. Oh, oh, I believe they're NPN transistors, yeah. From a uh, old amp. This was all made from old amplifier and, and paper clips. The r red and black pins is data negative and data positive, and this blue pin is clear. So, well, first to do something, we will charge up this red. And it's black. Black will be positive and red will be negative. So let's see if we want to make one one. We would charge that and charge that. Which is directly hooked up to the capacitors. They both get charged. And then we can use that and then and we can temporarily store that data in that contraption. But then the capacitors will slowly discharge because, well, they aren't perfect. If they were, well, we'd be living in a perfect world. But anyway, um, and close. Anyway, um, enough thinking. All right, so, um, yeah, this little circuit will be able to store all of the, all of the one 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 zero zero one zero zero and uh, if we make a computer or er, control circuit thingy and uh, permanent memory storage would have a fully functional computer not a very good one but still one so um, for the permanent memory we could use tons of things we could use these little memory cards which are just um, raw memory cards, basically. 
But no. Put that back in my other device. There we go. We could use all sorts of stuff. We could use a data hard drive, but I'm too lazy, as you very well know. Ooh. Like, I'm probably not going to make a computer. I'm just going to use this for projects that need to temporarily store data. So, this can be used in purposes like. Let's say you are using a um, thing that and you type one zero into, but then you go on to the next one and, and type one one. But uh, you would if when you type one one, you fill up all the storage, and if you type zero zero, you'd basically just be He's um, draining all the current by putting these two pins at a state that would discharge these capacitors because these are basically electric switches that when they take in an input signal, they just sh short their, their two other pins. So yeah, that's how the transistor works. So yeah, right here I'm using... Um, 22 UF capacitor, electrolytic capacitor. Make sure you get the polarity right, otherwise explosions will happen. Good. Good. Do not connect them background. I have made that mistake. Oh, it is horrible. Anyway, back at it. Guess there's nothing much. Oh yes, um, I've made this little data sheet here. So, red is for black is for data negative, red is for data positive, and blue is for reset. It can work from one to twenty-five volts, um, one milliamp to too many amps, and then and can store up to one minute after charge. Because, well, these are bigger capacitors than normally used. Like a normal ROM chip will use com capacitors so small that even a, m a microscope couldn't see them. Like, you'd have to use a megascope? No, um, those are really, no, just not a megascope. A micro, what's smaller than micro? Eh, I don't know. Anyway, science dogs and all kinds of crap. Bye. Well. Why am I so fuzzy? Anyway, bye. Because I'm not going to go into that.